Hi, I'm Ed from Wright, and today we're here with an autonomous mower. I'm sure you've seen some clips of this machine running around, but I'm not sure we've ever walked through the machine in terms of what the components are and how to set it up and run it from A to Z. So we're going to quickly walk through that process, show you what it's all about, availability and the price as well. So let's go ahead and look at the machine. All right, so here's the 72 inch autonomous mower. It only comes in a 72 inch deck because this is all about wide area mowing. It comes with a 40 horsepower engine because it has the electronic throttle control, which is important for the computer system to be able to control the engine and read what's going on with the engine. Um, it comes with a mulch kit in it um, just because side discharging introduces a lot of complexity to autonomous mowing. For example, the camera could see some of the grass flowing out of it or we wanna be able to cut on both sides. And things like that. This particular machine has duels on it and the weight kit under the platform. Um, the duels are not part of a standard autonomous mower. That's an upgrade for a regular mower as is the weight kit. And so this is experimental. So far we see it only helping the autonomous mower do more things. Um, I wouldn't buy an autonomous mower on the premise of putting duels on it yet, but you're certainly welcome to buy duels and, and, um, and run them with there. So um, on the front here we've got our um, some of our sensors. So we have four cameras. There's one on the front here and it has two eyes that um, are see an infrared and there's a projector here that gives um, a dot cloud so that the machine can see, create a map of everything that's in front of it. It also has a uh, RGB camera in there as well. And there's four of them. So there's one on the front, one on the side, one on the other side, and one on the back. And then this camera right here is also a stereo based camera and that camera um, it does object recognition, so things like um, seeing um, a cone or something like that, it says it classifies objects. We have a little bit bigger battery than a typical mower to give us more power reserve for all the electronics that are on board. Uh, behind the wheel here, there's actually a very precise encoder, um, and so it knows where the wheel position is at all times. If we go over here to the console, that's a pretty typical machine here. We've got the key to start the machine, got the regular PTO switch. When we're manual mode, we're not dependent on the main computer system. Um, you can manually drive the machine, boot it up, that, that kind of thing. When you go into autonomous mode, now the remote or the um, remote control or the autonomous system can control the mower. So when we're autonomous mode, we have um, an e-stop here. So if you need to work on something or whatever, you can uh, kill that. And then this map button here um, is for recording the perimeter and we'll get back to that in just a minute. And then we've got the regular park brake. Pretty much the entire chassis here is very similar to a regular ZK uh, with just the system um, integrated into it. Um, here we have the GPS antenna. The GPS is our primary source of where in the world we are, um, but we use also um, a cellular connection here that gives us a GPS calibration data. So between the two, we can get down to about a quarter inch accuracy of where we know that we are. And then um, this component here is also very important. There's a high grade um, accelerometer in here. And so for example, um, GPS, it doesn't know which way it's headed, but once we start moving, this thing can say, okay, well that's north or that's east or whatever. Um, and then when it commands a turn, while well, the GPS is not moving, commands a turn, you know, it'll say to the pumps, hey, you know, I need, I need a turn, sends a command to the pump, gets an output at the wheel, and we should get motion from the accelerometer. All those things agree and work together, create very precise control over the machine. Now inside here, well, first we've got the, um, the camera on the, that's looking behind the machine. Um, our hand inputs are drive-by-wire. It's a hydrogear-based system. So you can see here the hand control input. And then right here, we have a CAN bus-based controller um, that takes the hand inputs and uh, controls the pumps. So you can see the pumps down here. It's a hydrostatic mower um, with actuators that uh, control the transmissions. And so all that system there is hydrogear based. And when we're in manual, it's completely running on that system. When we switch over here, now the computer can talk to that system and take control of the machine. I have here the remote. It stays in this little pocket on the charger. And I've turned it on. The primary purpose of the remote is we've got the e-stop button on the bottom here, 
but there's a couple other features it has. For example, um, we have mow, which is the button you use the most. You select that and it begins mowing. We also have teleop, which gives us remote control. We'll talk about the remote a little bit more later. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and set up the perimeter. Um, the computer's booted up. The computer typically finishes booting by the time you've gotten it off the trailer and um, onto the lawn. And I'm going to start up the machine. I'm going to hit map and record a perimeter. When I get back within six feet of that start point, I'll have um, my job. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I cut the prim. I pressed the map button and I cut my perimeter path. And if you were, I'm just doing a field test here, but if you were cutting a regular area, you'd manually cut in real close once. Then you would uh, record your second path typically, and that would be your, your boundary, and then it would mow inside those two paths. So I, I pressed map, I made that cut. When I got back within six feet at the beginning, the light on the dashboard indicated that I had finished that zone that I selected. And here on the app, um, you can see that we're across the street from the factory and I have a little rectangular setup. And I can actually go into reports here and see the area that I've set up. You can see it set up my stripe pattern in the direction where the um, would have the least amount of turns. And we can get into patterns a little bit later, but you can see that I've set up an area to cut. Now, that I'm ready to go, what I can do with the remote is I'm going to go ahead and press the mow button. And we'll go ahead and begin cutting that area. Now while it's cutting the area, I'm gonna point out a couple features. You can see here in the app that down on the right hand corner, there's an arrow telling me which way my stripes are going to be going. Um, you can see up in the right hand corner, time remaining seven minutes or 0.2 acres. And so um, you, know, you get a, a picture of how long it's gonna take. Now, if there was a tree in the middle of that area and it goes around the tree, it's gonna add a little bit of time to that. But if the area is all clear, it's gonna be quite precise in terms of how long it's going to take to cut that area. So right now I've selected the tab called Recent Jobs. I can also go to Favorite Jobs. And you can see that over here, um, the other day someone cut a zone here as number one and they put a star on it to call it a favorite job. I could also turn that star off if it's not my preferred zone and record a new one. The path that I'm cutting today, I could also call that a favorite. So that's, that allows you to have job uh, reload. And there's, there's really no limit to the amount of jobs that you can have in the system. But um, when you load the app, then what you'll get here is um, all the ones that are nearby, the most recent nearby ones. And if you hit favorites, you get all the nearby ones that you have saved from previous weeks. So you can see it's just working back and forth. Um, within the app here, there's a couple options. I could change the speed of the machine. So I could say, let's go three miles an hour or turtle speed, and it's gonna slow down. Obviously that's gonna give me better cut quality. So you kind of dial in the speed for based on the type of property that you're mowing. Also the remote control is similar there. The trigger here on my left hand side, I can toggle that up to speed the machine up, or I can toggle it down to slow it down. We can go painfully slow if we want. Let's go down to like, what, two, one and a half miles an hour, two miles an hour, and it's just gonna creep along really slowly. So you got some options in there. And then under reports, again here, you'll be able to see, I'll refresh this, the progress that it's made. The green area is the area that's cut. You can see that the perimeter was the center line of the mower, and when it makes its turn, the outside the deck goes outside the center line of that recorded area. And then um, here's our, our uh, plan map. So what I'm going to do here is 
I'm going to stop the machine for a second. And to do that, I hit the cancel button on the remote. I can hit teleop, which puts the machine in remote control mode here. And I'm going to turn the machine to a 45 degree angle, about 45 degrees. There we are. Exit remote control mode. Now within the app here, there's this button called Stripe Plan. I'm gonna hit Stripe Plan and it's going to change the mowing configuration. It's going to actually set the stripe direction at the 45 degree angle that I positioned the mower at. So um, I'm going to go ahead and hit mow and you'll see that it'll begin cutting 45s. You can see the planned map here with 45s on it. We'll refresh this. Now within the app, there's a couple other features. So let's say that um, you ran out of gas and you come back later, you could resume the job that you were in the middle of so you don't have to start over again. If we're cutting deep field grass, I can select relaxed obstacle detection. Um, Let's talk about obstacle detection for a second. So what the machine does is it has, um, in, its, in its mind, it has a safety perimeter around the machine. And the faster it goes, the bigger the safety area gets, and the slower it goes, it shrinks. And so if you're uh, next to a tree line, the machine will go real slow as it maintains a distance from that tree line. And if it sees wide open area, it'll accelerate up to that speed that I set on the remote. Now, if it comes up to, let's say, um, a big bush in the middle of a field, what it will do is it will approach that bush and it will go around it um, and it will clear it by about six feet, about one swath away from that object. So it won't get near anything because of the camera system. Uh, we're very cautious about anything that goes up to the machine. Now, if I was to walk up to the machine or get near it and it was coming at it, the machine will just shut down, hard shut down, and the, the engine will cut off. Um, and it'll just sit there. So it has um, an obstacle detection and obstacle avoidance systems in there. Um, I would say that if you have objects in an area, what you're gonna typically do is when you record your perimeter, you're gonna notch out those objects. Um, the obstacle avoidance system really is to give us persistence. So if we had a 10 acre job and one telephone pole in the middle, you don't wanna get up to that pole and then not be able to proceed with the job. So it gives us persistence to be able to get around obstacles like that. But you're not gonna go somewhere with um, 40 trees and have it go around all the trees. It's not practical um, or not intended even for that type of work. We're mostly doing wide area mowing here. There's really no limit to how small of an area you can program and run the machine in. Um, you could run it in a 10 foot square. It's just not practical for that, right? So um, ideal use cases for this machine are not so much the size of every area it's gonna cut, it's that you have the ability to keep the machine busy as you go from cut to cut to cut. So you could have, um, an area with five or ten acres and you might cut it up into one acre segments or you might have a five acre segment um, but really what it is is about keeping the machine busy and um, and while the machine's cutting you can get on another mower and uh, do the edges or get ahead of it on the next job or let's say you've you've got um, a job in the autonomous mowers in the last section so you might manually work yourself back towards the autonomous mower so you both finish that job at exactly the same time so it's going to mow this area here. When it's done, it's gonna make um, two perimeter passes. It's gonna make one perimeter pass to clean up all the turns, and then it's gonna make an outer pass that cuts in the edge of that zoned out area. That's pretty much it. A um, Couple questions that we hear, let me go ahead and stop the machine. I'm gonna hit cancel. And it'll idle down for me. A couple questions that we hear is, can the mower cut hills? Um, well, you can cut with the remote control. You can turn the blades on, turn the blades off, turn the engine on and off. You can drive it, steer it, all that. And you can drive it up on a hill if you'd like. Um, I will say that if the machine's far away from you, it's hard to see, especially if you're going side to side, if it's going in a straight line. But definitely you can get up on a hill with manual controls autonomously. Um, our limit is traction. And so, um, 
I would say somewhere around 10 to 15 degrees begins pushing the limits. Obviously, if you have dew and the nose is pointing downhill, it's gonna have a harder time making that turn. Um, the ideal hill would be if you have flat ground at the bottom and then you have a slope coming up and flat ground on the top. If it's able to make those turns um, at those flatter areas in the top or bottom, it, you can get a little bit more out of that hill. Um, it's not primarily a hill mower, but like I said, you can get it on some uh, moderate slopes. Uh, the other thing we hear is can it mow in the rain? Um, I cut my couple acres with it uh, the weekend before last in the pouring rain um, and had no issues really. Um, the, the only environmental conditions I would say that it sometimes runs into is if, if it's real early in the morning or late in the afternoon where the sun is on the horizon, if the mower pivots towards the sun, it's, let's say its eyes have to dilate really quickly. If it, if, the, if it doesn't dilate quickly enough, it won't be able to resolve the image that's in front of it for a second. So it'll stop for a second and then resume and carry on. Um, but yeah, most, most conditions it doesn't have um, any issue with. Um, like I said, moisture or rain isn't a problem for the machine at all. Um, the other thing to note is it's, it's got that manual reversion, right? So if you get to a job where it doesn't make sense to use the autonomous function, you can carry on. It fits right into your crew. Everything else that out is in the market today autonomously is autonomous dedicated, whereas this autonomous hybrid allows you to deploy the machine in a much more fluid manner into your existing uh, workflow, um, which really helps a lot. A couple other things that I'll point out in the app include um, alerts. So there's alerts that'll tell you if the machine stops, why it stopped. But I can also go to um, more details and reports. And you can see here the autonomous hours. So these charts, the green bars are how much the machine's been running autonomously. The gray bars are the manual mowing. A lot of times that gray bar is setting up a perimeter or making manual trim passes or getting it off the trailer, that type of things. Um, and so there's, there's a number of different reports and information you can download on the machine's productivity. Now, um, another question that a lot of people have is, um, what's, the, what's the price on a machine like this? Well, as you can imagine, it's not an inexpensive machine. There's a lot of advanced and high precision technology here. Also it includes a fair amount of support. And so I think the easiest way, there's several ways you can buy the machine, but the easiest way to characterize it is the machine's about 55 grand and that includes two years of prepaid services. Those services keep the machine online. You get updates typically about every two weeks where the machine gets smarter and smarter. Um, the, uh, you know, if, if you have any trouble with the machine, you can text Greensies helpline. They've got live help, English and Spanish, and they'll get back to you on, um, hey, you know, try this or look at that. They can even, I've even um, had a machine and they took a picture of me through the camera and text, texted it back to me. So there's a lot of great support on their end of it um, to get anything covered that you need covered. The other thing that that um, support includes is any of the autonomous stuff. It's more than a warranty. If any of the autonomous stuff spontaneously stops working, we fix it um, under that support agreement. So 55 grand includes two years of that support. Um, I, I think the way to get your mind around 55 grand is it's cheaper than most wide area mowers, but you don't have to drive it the entire time and it's more versatile. You can put it in all types of job sites. Um, and so that's where we are price wise. Availability, we do have these available. Um, if you're interested in buying one, just reach out to us, reach out to your dealer and we can sort that out. Typically it's gonna be an order in type of product. Um, and we would also want to demo the machine with you um, to make sure you know, it's a good fit for you and the job sites that you're on. Uh, but like I said, they're available and uh, we can get you one um, if you've got a great application for one. So if you have any other questions, by all means, just reach out to us um, directly or on the comments of this video and we'll do whatever we can to get you uh, the answers you're looking for. Hey, I'm Charles Brian Quinn or CBQ. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Greensy. We made autonomous mowing software to help landscapers like you be more efficient, more productive, and safer in your mowing operations. We partnered with the best manufacturers of zero turn commercial equipment like Wright Manufacturing to enable this, to allow you to do more and go home earlier and put more money in your pocket. Now, the key is software. We make regular updates to our software. Just last week, we added a feature where when the mower is done with a job, it vibrates, uh, letting you know that it's done so you can move it to the next job and keep that pipelining of activities going, allowing you to be more efficient in your mowing. Uh, before that, I think this week, we're working on a feature that allows a better, more accurate setting of the stripe angle and editing of the jobs that you've already done. 
Uh, we've previewed that for some of our early customers and as a subscriber, the mower updates regularly. In fact, we're out testing today features like that. If you're curious about getting a demo, uh, visit your local dealer, get the conversation started, or write to us directly at Wright or Greensy. And be sure to check out Greensy University for videos on how it works and uh, more information about how to be more efficient in your mowing operations.